back then you come into the library and you'd see the card catalog. Rows and rows of card catalog, rows and rows of uh, uh, reference books. Right? There was no cafe out in the front. That food was in the building. Or food in the building. Well, there were definitely labs around but there were no general purpose labs. So that was, that was a huge uh, difference when, uh, when the Commons opened in, in 2004. They would sit and then they would write and then they would then ask, uh, for example, the writing center uh, help and they would, it's all under one roof. Or if they needed to uh, figure out how to do a presentation, uh, they need some graphics, they would go over to the digital media center. So uh, we became a one-stop shop. I was involved with the Commons from before it started, really, when uh, Dick Ellis was the librarian. He was finding that students were coming into the library, but they were, they were looking for electric, electronic resources. And he said, if students are going to start doing uh, the research online, he wanted them to physically be coming into the library. Where, so the whole idea it was to um, marry the printed information with the electronic information, but also a very critical part was to have the support there. So um, the, the support was coming from um, the librarians, and it was also coming from IT support. Initially, it was an information commons, and we primarily provided computers for students to sit down and work, and we also provided some uh, limited assistance, for example, uh, getting connected to a <coughs> the Wi-Fi, which back then in 2004 was definitely a challenge, believe you me. We used to have lineups uh, at the beginning uh, of the semester, almost going out to the door trying to get uh, students to you know, understand that this is a place uh, more than just sitting down and doing work. Uh, I mean, this is a spot for collaboration, it's a spot for socialization, because uh, often in people's minds a library is a very quiet spot, and you know, the Commons is not a very quiet spot. You know, we have a help center right in the middle of the second floor, which is predicated on communicating. A lot of people had a hard time getting their head around that at the beginning because they said, this is just another lab. And I said, no, it's not just another lab. This is all about the philosophy behind the commons, where another lab would have been put the computers here and the students can use it. And of course, students can do that. That can be exactly what the students do. But it was the idea that this is where you can come and do your work. You can print things off. You can um, use the use the reference material, the physical reference material. So the main one was this main area of the library, but even here it changed. Uh, from the beginning there was the Digital Media Centre. The rotunda uh, was an interesting addition. Students could sit down and bring their own device, but they had individual um, workstations. But there was also a place that they could uh, work collaboratively. It could be independent of the hours of the library. We, uh, added the Hatcher Commons, uh, which a lot of students sometimes think of as being for residents, but it's not, it's for all students. And then it was the addition of the makerspace. When you talk about a makerspace, it's not just having the equipment there, it's a tinker um, philosophy. It's, it's about people coming in and playing with things and learning that way, and about a community of people learning together. The more recent addition, which is the bottom floor of uh, the education building, My time at the Commons included the COVID-19 pandemic. The university had worked hard to maintain services throughout that period, and Megan and I worked to keep our services going and our student staff working by offering some of our services remotely. We also kept our work term placements going during the pandemic, which helped our engineering students meet their work term requirements during a time when they were really hard to find. We had to be creative and flexible in our approach, but I think we pulled it off. And it looked just like this, with a camera and a microphone at home, and meeting with our students throughout the week. We started offering workshops virtually and challenged our students to come up with topics they thought would help students who were adjusting to studying at home. We converted our main lab in the Kiwi2 library to a socially distanced workspace for students to access computers and printers if they didn't have access to it at home. 
When we returned to campus, we gradually restored the main lab as requirements around social distancing relaxed. We had to figure out what services we could offer and what timing to restore them that made the most sense. And again, everyone pulled together to make it work. Initially, it was just a work term student and me. And as the commons grew, they realized that this isn't going to do. We need constant help for students. With the students, I found nothing but respect. Honesty and respect, right? That's, that's my biggest memory. And, and I have other stories for, from other students, but uh, they made me laugh. You know, they made me concerned at times, but the majority of the time they made me laugh. The student helping student model, uh, sort of going along with the uh, uh, learning commons, is, is a very powerful model. There was a presentation given. Um, at a national commons conference talking about the student model and it generated a fair bit of discussion and excitement across the country. We meet regularly with students and we give them this feedback so that if there are problems or there are successes, they get that feedback. The common helps you polish your skills uh, in a lot of different ways. They can be soft skills, they can be uh, people skills, they can be creative skills. Students are helping students and it's a very um, easy way of interacting and intimidation-free zone. After joining the Commons, I really saw the value of having a team with me who were supportive, um, we'd give each other advice. Working at the Commons was kind of amazing for me because I made a lot of lifelong friendships with the people that I worked with. I got to meet a lot of interesting creative people from all different walks of life. Especially being an international student, um, I. My family connections were very limited in Newfoundland. I had really good friends, but then the Commons and everyone at the Commons um, became more or less like my extended family. Commons never felt like work uh, to me because not only have always I have always had um, the pleasure to work along um, amazing people and under amazing supervision, but also because the work itself uh, brings out the best in people. The Commons is very different from other uh, student opportunities because it's basically a one-stop shop that teaches you so much. I remember learning Python at the Commons. I remember learning Photoshop, Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro. I learned how to write my first HTML CSS code there. I did my first tutoring there. Um, maybe the coolest thing was probably digging into the, the Adobe Creative Suite. I, I came in with no knowledge of that at all and, uh, and came out being able to show people how to use it, which is, which is pretty great. In terms of instructing people on how to, you know, and, and helping them solve their problems, um, I got really comfortable with learning how to meet people where they're at. There's an infinite number of avenues for how someone can learn something and uh, learning that, uh, from a, uh, a teacher or instructor role, you know, a tech support role, um, I definitely got that at the Commons. The skills and experiences that I earned at the Commons have contributed immensely to getting me to where I am today. It's an environment that always brings me brings me joy, um, and that kind of helped me set out or lay out the a path that I that I still walk on today. Human nature is to collaborate, to meet, to talk, to hash out things. And you think 20 years from now, you say, ah, the place won't be here. I don't believe that. I think because of human nature and the need to collaborate, guarantee it'll be here 20 years in the future. It's also a fantastic place to work as a full-time staff member as well as a student. Every day you know you're helping students of all kinds with their academic programs. I've been away from the university now for a year and a half, and I still miss the staff and students I worked with there. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary of such an awesome service. I'm happy that I got to be a part of it, and I look forward to seeing what you do next. Happy 20th anniversary to the Commons. Happy 20th anniversary. 
happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary. I'm very excited for the 20th anniversary, so give me a hand. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary.